Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, parliamentary elections held in Ethiopia amid delays in several constituencies. Israeli forces continue violent suppression of anti-settlement protests in Beta. Several US states announce early end to additional unemployment aid. And in our video section, we take a look at the indefinite strike launched by community health workers in India. In our first story, millions of Ethiopians cast their votes in the country's parliamentary elections held on June 21st. Around 33.6% of the country's over 100 million people were registered to vote on Monday. However, logistical and security issues have delayed elections in one-fifth of the constituencies. This is the country's first election since Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed came to power in 2018. He introduced economic reforms, released thousands of political prisoners and allowed the return of exiles. Ahmed's prosperity parties was the frontrunner among 46 parties and 9,500 candidates on Monday. However, several opposition parties, including the Oromo Federalist Congress, boycotted the elections. They have cited intimidation by security forces and the detention of thousands. They also stated that the agents were beaten and their accreditations were taken away in several regions. Meanwhile, no election has, date has been set for 38 constituencies in the Watan Tigray region. A year after Ahmed came to power, he disbanded the dominant EPRDF coalition. It was composed of four major parties, including the Tigray People's Liberation Front. All three parties, except the TPLF, joined Ahmed's Prosperity Party. While elections were delayed in the rest of Ethiopia, the TPLF formed a government in Tigray in 2020. Months later, Prime Minister Ahmed ordered troops in the area, claiming that a federal base had been attacked. While the TPLF was soon ousted, the war in Tigray continued to what has been now over seven months. Ethiopian troops have also been joined by troops from neighbouring Eritrea. Varying estimates place the death toll in Tigray between 2,000 to over 50,000. Around 2 million people have been displaced and over 350,000 are on the brink of famine. Aid agencies have also documented widespread sexual violence and extrajudicial executions. In our next story, around 20 Palestinians were injured after Israeli forces attacked a protest in the occupied West Bank on June 20th. People have been resisting the construction of an illegal Israeli settlement on the Jabal Sabeh mountain. The protests have been met with live ammunition, rubber-coated bullets and tear gas. Five Palestinians have been killed, including 16-year-old Ahmed Zahi Bani Shamsa, who was shot in the head last week. Approximately 618 others have also been injured, in addition to the Jabal Sabeh settlement. Occupation forces are also seizing land to build a bypass road exclusively for settlers. The land belongs to Palestinians from Beta, Huwara and Zatar. The land had been seized for military purposes until 2018. As reported by journalist Rania Zabane, no building is permitted on the land and an eviction notice has been sent to settlers on June 8. However, the settlement is still in place, risking the livelihoods of 17 Palestinian families who grow olive trees in the area. In addition to routine protests, people have also launched what is called confusion activities at night. These include the use of blaring horns, lights and burning tires to force the settlers to leave the land. As per local estimates, over 700,000 illegal Israeli settlers live in illegal settlements in occupied East Jerusalem and the West Bank. 164 settlements and 116 settlement outposts have been set up so far. The settlement in Jabal Sabeh has been set up just months after an outpost was constructed on the Al Arma mountain. The two outposts will overlook the Jordan Valley, which makes up about 30% of the occupied West Bank. We now go to the United States, where 26 states have announced an end to the additional unemployment aid. Out of these, nine cut, their, they cut down their federal pandemic unemployment compensation on June 19th. This was over a month and a half before the assistance was set to expire on September 4th. The measure was part of the $1.4 trillion stimulus package passed by the US Congress in December 2020. It offered an additional $300 US each week on top of existing unemployment aid. The cuts are being implemented in Republican-controlled states with the exception of the state of Louisiana. Governor John Edwards stated that the cuts were being put in place to increase state employment benefits next year. However, this increase is only $28. 412,000 people filed for unemployment claims in the US last week. State governments have claimed that additional aid is preventing workers from taking open positions. The US has been witnessing labor shortages in chain businesses and restaurants. Unions have pointed to the extremely unsafe working conditions and low wages as the reasons behind this trend. A study by the University of California revealed that the morbidity rates of line cooks increased by 60% during the pandemic. The Century Foundation has estimated that cuts will impact nearly 440,000 unemployed workers immediately. Overall, the impact will be felt by 12 million people availing various pandemic assistance programs. These cuts are also being put in place just as the federal moratorium on evictions is set to expire on June 30th. And for our final story, we go to India where thousands of frontline health workers have launched an indefinite strike. Asha workers are primarily women and provide crucial health services in poor and marginalized communities. However, they are classified as volunteers and do not receive salaries. Instead, they are given task-based incentives and a monthly honorarium which can be as low as 20 US dollars. ASHA workers across India also observed a general strike in May. Despite performing duties such as COVID-19 testing, they were not given adequate safety gear. Now, workers in the states of Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh have gone on to strike to raise long-standing demands. 
Here is A.R. Sindhu from the Centre of Indian Trade Unions to talk about the action. Hundreds of ASHA workers are dying means due to COVID. And you see that the government in the first place itself, they announced an insurance package, means it is a life insurance thing of 50 lakh rupees. That also, it means especially in the first wave, at least minimum to 300 ASHA workers have died across the country. But a very few, I means maybe less than 10 people got the insurance coverage, their families. And in the second wave, which is without any means, the symptoms is very rarely seen. So they are exposed and they means they are dying and then they are not even termed as COVID deaths. So they, there is no post-mortem and they, they are not given any certificate in the second rate. Even in Haryana recently, you know, around um, eight cases were there in the last month itself of death. None is given because they are telling that there should be because the COVID protocol is there. They are, you know, their bodies are not even handed over to the families and they are cremated. But the government is now asking for a post-mortem report for having the compensation. This is the situation. So there the foremost thing is that they are doing their duty fantastically and they are appreciated. They are the link from of the government to the people. So their work is so important and this is their working condition. So during this period, we have been continuously approaching the government for risk allowance and additional because they other all the other uh, health services are almost in a stand still it is not being done so their additional income they were supposed to get was through other immunization other programs like that that is also totally their income has been stopped and the services are also not delivered to the people so here we are demanding that additional means the compensatory allowances there are basic demands of minimum wages and social security including pension is also already there but at least during the pandemic at least some risk allowance that government should announce that the government is not ready and the safety gear without the safety gear how can you expose people to the corona patients so that is also other demand so we, these are the demands which we are pushing forward safety and the risk allowance and the income support and in the families, because of due to the lack of um, employment or the loss of employment and income, there is a rampant poverty. So the income support and the food support that also for all the workers we are demanding. So this how we've been continuously raised. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.